Hey guys, welcome back. It is Friday. Happy Friday. Have a good Friday. Have a good weekend. Hope everyone had a great week. We got a few topics to discuss today, and those topics are probably not worthy of their own video, or they have videos already in the past, so we're going to touch on them briefly. We got updates to some scenarios. We got more fake signatures being graded. We have more fake cards being graded. We have more fake cards no longer being graded, but still active. All right, buckle up. Let's go through here. Uh, now, if you're in the market for Pokemon signatures, you are in for an absolute... There are landmines everywhere. There is some very questionable signatures, and those signatures are being graded. I don't know if PSA, at this point in time, they fired their guy that was their signature guy that was authenticating their signatures, and it seems like they haven't replaced him at this point in time, or who knows if they replaced him with somebody else. But... We have some issues here, uh, and I know who I'd be asking if I was looking, if I was in this market, if I was buying signatures, secondhand signatures. I, personally, I would never just buy secondhand signatures. It's kind of weird, especially with everything being, uh, having a requirement that it's personalized to have somebody else's name on there or a cheesy, like, two trainer or two G baller 69. Uh, it, it just, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't seem right. Most of these artists don't like the fact that people are reselling them. So there's that. There's also just, it's just like, how do you buy something that pays respect to an artist that disrespects the artist because it goes against their wishes? It doesn't make any sense to me. I get it. It's difficult to go to these events where they are signing. Uh, some of the events don't exist anymore, largely due to the fact or certain artists don't sign anymore because people abuse it people are flipping this stuff uh and it, it pisses off the artist that's pretty much what it comes down to so to me i i don't get it but uh if you were looking for expert opinions and maybe maybe you gotta buy them a coffee you might want to reach out to swolepoke you might want to reach out to pfm you might want to reach out to alec i know those are the three people that i would ask uh if i'm if i'm questioning something like this be careful be careful out there if you're buying buying this stuff even if it's graded I get it. It's in a case. So people start, they're like, oh, who cares? It's in a case, including any consignment companies or consignment individuals. Usually they'll throw their arms up. And they, oh, well, well, it's PSA's fault now. And then we'll play the pointing point the finger game, similar to the fake case where everyone was just kind of pointing at each other, uh, whether it was BBCE that was taking money to uh, authenticate something that they said they couldn't authenticate before. It's just, it, guys, please be careful. Just be careful. I, the, there are noob traps everywhere. Even some of these, you got to do some deep digging. You got to know about the events. You got to know about this stuff. PSA, for the love of God, just can you, the three people that I've mentioned, can you just pay them to help you out with this stuff? I know it's going to be expensive. It's going to be more expensive than the minimum wage grader or slightly above minimum wage grader. But you pay, you get what you pay for. So here we have a couple examples here. Not looking good. Not not a great look, looking fake, uh, and I would trust the uh, those three individuals to uh, to call out the the fake stuff to begin with. We have Swolpoke here posting about still slapping anything and everything that comes their way in in regards to Beckett. So Beckett, again, and Beckett, good luck, good luck. So it's bad enough with the PSA guarantee, and I know I'm going to piss off all the people that like each individual grading company as I bash them in this video. This is largely criticism for BSA. They have the ability to fix it. Are they going to fix it? You should want them to fix it if you have a bunch of this graded PSA stuff. Because if you have real stuff that's real and really authentic in your PSA slabs, you should not want them just grading anything and everything or making mistakes. This is how they, they can cut down on some mistakes. Beckett, on the other hand, so yes, with PSA, typically with the authentic authentication guarantee or whatever the hell they want to call it, money back guarantee, you're going to have to fight with them quite a bit. You're going to have to prove it up and down and left and right that it's not a real thing. Uh, even, even the altered signatures, they didn't deactivate them. They kind of like skirt around that because they don't want to pay it out. It's like an insurance company of any kind, insurance of any kind, they are going to fight you to the end of the earth to, to prevent them from having to pay out. They do not want to pay out. They want to they want to show people, they want to tell people that they pay out, and they will, but they don't want to actually do it when it comes time to, to fork over the money, especially when it's a large amount of money. But that's what the that's what the up charges are for. So either get rid of the up charges or stand behind it and make it less has less of a hassle for everyone involved. So back it. God, you you can show Beckett that they, they graded a card that has pieces of it trimmed off. You can show them before and after. It'll be a vintage sports card with a just it's a, just a giant chunk of it lopped off. 
before and after pictures, same landmark, same stain, same everything on the card itself, not deactivated. And it gets pumped through all the consignment companies. So be careful buying this stuff, uh, especially signatures or anything of the sort. If people alter cards or if they alter signatures or if they have fake signatures, they're probably going to, they're going to dump it. If they know they're doing something wrong, they're going to dump it through consignment companies. And that's when it's good on the consignment companies to take some precautions to protect their customers. There's, again, it's less money for them. It's easy for them to put the blinders on. Just, oh, oh, I, I didn't notice that all of the cards that we were selling were altered and coming from people that were banned from the grading companies and, you know, pushing them through someone else. So when you see a consignment company step up and do something that protects the best interest of the customers, the people buying from them, I, I you got to give them a round of applause. So here we go. What do we got here? We got a forgery and we got a real. So again, people are going to copy if they're faking these signatures, they're going to copy known real examples. They might even copy the date. And that's where you might have to go back to whatever the event was to find out. So this should all be cataloged, start to finish. The grading companies should be, if there's even the slightest, teensy weensiest bit of doubt in their mind. And this is where they could do something. This is where the grading company could do something. They're going to say, oh, we're protecting you guys. You are you're, the customers and authenticity and everything is the most important part. When they, when they receive stuff that is, is either altered, when they receive stuff that is, there needs to be something in place where they can prevent this, whether they're talking to each other, whether they're allowed to, if somebody is caught with their pants down, submitting altered cards, maybe that needs to be a more public ordeal to, to cut down on this stuff to prevent this from happening. Because... If not, it makes them look dumb and it also isn't protecting anyone because people are, you know, they're just going to go to another grading company and submit cards. They're going to go in under a different name and submit cards instead of calling it out, calling it what it is. Swole poke here with another post. We got a, uh, the, the real and the fake Pikachu comparison. Again, when there's a date on it like this, if the people that run the signing event have a list of who got stuff signed, if they have a catalog of what got signed, there's no reason the BGS shouldn't, they should even probably pay for access to that. The people that are running these events should sh sell a list of everything that was graded at that event. You can even have photos so they can photo match it. And then it doesn't get graded if it's not on the list. Because it wasn't, it clearly wasn't signed at the event that it's pretending to be signed at. I know wild, right? I'm sure the people running these events could work out a deal with you. Don't know why they don't talk to each other. Don't know why they don't put something in place. Help them with their cost of running that event. Uh, pay them the little extra for the uh, the time and effort that it takes to catalog every single signature that's done. And voila. At least at the very least, you'd have like names. So if it's if it's addressed to somebody, if it says to, to Jimmy John Johnson, you're going to know that, yes, Jimmy John Johnson, he did get something signed today. Or on that on that on that day, so here we have a, a nice little forgery here. We're copying the uh, the uh, sketch, the Shikishi Shikishi sketch. Um, pretty cool little piece, uh, and uh, no wonder they are they're gonna copy it. So even if it's not on a trading card itself, you need to be careful. We covered this many times on the channel in terms of like altered autographs where people you know tricked poor health artists into signing stuff for them at no charge. They were asked not to resell these. Then they go ahead and they wipe off the personalization and they sell them whoop de doo whoop de doo We had colored in Charizards. I saw another one of those recently. The colored in Charizard guys, uh, they're not, uh, uh, the vast majority of them, they are not colored in by Arita. Yes, I know. The grading companies authenticate them anyway, and they don't mention anything about the fact that the the Charizard was sharpied in by the person that owns the card, or the person that, own, that, that sent it in for grading, rather than the artist itself. Tricks people, goes for a premium, uh, and screws over. Again, you have to be pretty deep down the, the Pokemon rabbit hole uh, in order to realize, like, hey, this, uh, Arita did it, but then he was just, he, he just let other people do it. Or if people asked for it, he was just like, oh, go ahead, color it in yourself. I'm not sitting here and coloring in a Charizard. Y you can't, you can't blame him. You can't be surprised. But at the same time, PSA or anyone encapsulating this thing without mentioning that, it's essentially an altered card. I can't Sharpie a card if it's not signed. So why should someone be able to Sharpie their own card? And they're going to be like, oh, well, we can't tell. Well, if you can't tell, you shouldn't authenticate it. 
that's the, that's what it comes down to at the end of the day is you need to know. Then we have examples here where it's an altered signature and PSA sees it before and after does fucking nothing about it. We had an altered, <laughs> an altered card here, uh, that Beckett was advertising just like, just, just no flipping clue what the hell is going on. And then all, all of a sudden recently we got CGC, uh, with, uh, what looks like a fake autograph that they were, <laughs> It had, it had problems with the label. It had problems with everything involved. It was the most embarrassing post I think I've ever seen by a grading company because that's the thing too. It's just like, this is something that you, we saw it with the temporary grading companies that came out during the pandemic and it was expected because you got like Jimmy John, he's got his garage open. He ordered a bunch of plastic cases from China and he's putting cards in there and he's going to put whatever on the label, dick butt grading, <laughs> DBG, uh, and, uh, it's it's just an absolute mess. But everyone involved, no matter what it is, no matter how good of a fake it is, no matter if it's auto pen, you got to be careful out there. You should know where the thing came from. Do not buy it from a consignment company. Don't do it. Not worth it. The extra risk that's involved there, you should at least, if you're going to, if you're going to <laughs> buy an autograph on the secondary market, First of all, I would say avoid that at all costs. But let's say that you have to. Let's say that you're going to, no matter what, no matter what I say, no matter what you think or what you're going to do, at least know who got it signed and at what event. If they can't tell you that, why are you touching the thing? It's probably just somebody else faked a scribble on a, on a card. So even if it, it, you got to, you got to at least want something that's authentic, right? I mean, if people are flipping and dipping or whatever, they probably don't give a shit as long as it's in a case and they can point the blame at the grading company. Maybe, maybe that's what it comes down to. All right. Now link tree brought to you by the link tree. Thank you everyone for using the link tree. We got affiliate links galore down here, pretty much anywhere you can buy Pokemon cards. You click on those before you shop. You support the channel in that way instead of sending me money. Much appreciated. No additional cost to yourself. Takes a couple extra seconds to do so, but those seconds are appreciated. And you guys have been absolutely killing it with that. Then we have the discount codes. Works pretty well the same way on most of those that you can save yourself some money and also support the channel at the same time. All stuff that I recommend. Uh, card Market is just here because Card Market wants to be here. Uh, so if you're from Europe, you should be shopping on Card Market if you have friends in Europe. You can get them to shop on Card Market for you. Send some stuff over. It's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome spot. Essentially, the uh, TCG player or Troll and Toad of, uh, of, of Europe. Now, let's get into the next little section here. We have more of these. And no, Max Max City is not to blame here. This is not his fault. This is not anyone's fault here. Uh, this is not somebody trying to sell these things. Um, but we've seen a ton of these. These got pumped through consignment services because this is a this is a screw up on PSA's part, whether they want to admit that or not. This is a noob track trap where if something is autographed, they will grade it no matter what it is, no matter how counterfeit it is, which goes completely against what what they're supposed to do. And no, just because it says card on there instead of trading card or instead of what the actual card is supposed to be or what the, the series is supposed to be, that is not enough. That is not an indication to somebody that this is a fake card inside. And the people that are leaning into PSA or any of the other grading companies for authenticity are getting absolutely shafted. They got absolutely shafted. Fanatics slash, I think they were still PWCC at the time. Fanatics made a bold play, did the right thing as a consignment company. Congratulations. Thank you to them for not allowing stuff like this to be sold on the platform anymore. It was a huge issue. We saw people, it's going to screw people over. And yes, anyone that's watched my videos know the difference, but the average, con you could show somebody can have a pretty decent sized collection and they would get fooled by this. Now they might not get fooled by the fact that the card is fake, but if they don't see good images or if they end up buying it, it just needs to not exist. Just I don't give a shit how many signatures are on this thing. Just don't grade it. Or if you're going to grade it, which I think is still embarrassing, put on here counterfeit card on the top of it instead of card. Cool? Nice. Now, we saw the same happen uh, with uh, regards to we had a uh, trading card here for a Magic the Gathering card uh, that was signed. It says authentic on it. It does not say that it's counterfeit. It does not say that it's a proxy. It does not say that it's anything of the sort. It's it's a counterfeit card. Let's leave it at that. You do not need to have an actual printed copy of something. Um, and uh, it's it's just it's just dumb. Now, last but not least, we're going to get into one more little scenario here, which I think is a, uh, a black eye, a little bit of a tarnish on the old PSA. Again, my apologies to the PSA collectors, stonk doggers, wiener baby extremes that have big stakes and 
God knows how many PSA cards. This is, again, this is constructive criticism. They can take it with what they will. Uh, if you are, again, if you're an advocate for any of these grading companies, I personally don't see the value in it. I would much rather, you know, assess my own cards and make sure that my own cards are real than have someone else do that for me. But I get it. If you're selling stuff, third-party opinion is always a benefit. People are obsessed with the fucking 10 on the top of it. So they'll pay a million, jillion extra dollars for something that has one little less white dot on it. Or maybe it was a 9 17 times and then it eventually got a 10. We've seen that happen with some pretty prominent cards. Now... Little example here, we have David Saba, 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 on the old Twitter who put a post here uh, where we have a card which is not real. It's a fraudulent card printed up in 2001 and faked as a 1993 card. PSA stopped grading this. Some poor sucker is going to pay 5000 for a fake card that never existed. So, is PSA going to do the right thing? They sure kind of did, partly. They don't know they okay so they're just preventing future people from abusing this um, because they didn't know what they were doing so here's another example of a mistake that's made by PSA that now they're no longer grading it so I don't know if they're going to claim that they're, right now they're in assessment they got to figure out whether or not it's real um, real or not we have Hawaii Winter League no longer grading 2001 apparently they they have two different designations for it here what the hell, man? Like, if, I I would think that if you're no longer grading this stuff, I have two of the same page here, that uh, that not only would you no longer grade it, but you'd also, like, put something here on the cert itself, on some of these cards themselves, that, hey, this is no longer being graded, and this one, you got to send it back in to see for authenticity, or I guess it's, I don't know, I don't know what would happen here. If you have one of these cards and you send it into PSA or you tell PSA you want to be... You want to be reimbursed for your guarantee because if it's not a real card, if it's not what it says it is, um, then the last purchase price should be refundable, right? But there's no indication of that on the website. Again, PSA, all the grading companies, have they have ample space. They can put probably pretty much whatever the fuck they want here on each individual card. And they don't. Like it should, you, if it's altered, if it's whatever it needs to be. And then anyone that's buying this stuff, it can be clear as day what's going wrong, what's going on with this stuff. Even the stuff that has known counterfeits, show the known counterfeits and show the real thing next to each other. Like There's no harm in that. And show the differences. Like This is a perfect opportunity for them to offer something great to collectors to reinforce the fact that, like, hey, if you look up the cert number on the PSA website when you're buying something, you're going to be able to see what the counterfeit looks like. It's going to show the differences you're going to be able to tell right away instead of it's just saying like, hey, there's no counterfeit, so it's deactivated. So am I, am I holding the real one or is this one of the fake ones that got the real one deactivated? That kind of thing. And then also whether or not you can have people contacted if they're the owners of these cards. Um, I know you could like register the cards to yourself. I don't know if that actually gets sends notifications, but you would think it would be a, an incentive for people to, uh, to register their collection on, uh, on PSA. If they get notified that, hey, uh, your 9281473 uh, cert number here is it, it's deactivated. Please send it in. We're going to refund you. How much did you pay for it? Here's a form. Fill it out. Uh, send it in and uh, and we'll fix it. it. It should be like super easy. It, it's all stuff that can be. It's not even automated. It's just stuff that can be simplified and streamlined to, to make it less of a headache for, for individuals that end up with something that was an oopsie doopsie on PSA's part. All right. Thanks for tuning in. You guys are the best. Love you. See you, in a, see you in a tomorrow in the in the happy hour chat. Join the Discord if you're not in the Discord. Join the happy hour chat if you're not in the happy hour chat. Uh, those are on Saturdays. And then on Sunday nights, we also uh, we, we watch the auctions together if you'd like to join in on that. So stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks thanks for being you. Look out for each other out there. And again, if you like stuff, it's it's fine to like whatever you like. But uh, make sure that you're not uh, putting the blinders on for anything that, uh, you know, they, they, they should be able to correct this stuff pretty easily, I think. Bye.